Beyond Education, in association with Enquiry Tracker, empowering schools to manage and grow inquiries and online enrolments. Hello and welcome to Beyond Education, where we will be unpacking and examining the way we teach, listen and learn from primary education all the way through to university and beyond. Beyond Education is backed by Inquiry Tracker, who are all in one solution for schools to easily manage their future families. Now, whilst Inquiry Tracker is presenting sponsor of this program, the opinions and statements expressed in the following shows are all our own. Now, of course, joining me today is our regular co-host and founder of Inquiry Tracker, Greg Capitelli. Greg, always a pleasure to have you. Thanks for your time today. Great to be back in the studio, Brittany. Now, today's topic, very interesting, of course, should parents be involved in education? It's one that many say, of course, they have to be, but maybe not as so much as we actually think. Is that fair? I think that's, you've hit a nail on the head there. Parents should be involved in the education of their child, but the real question is how much, mm. you know? And in Quarry Tracker, we know that the uh, the whole journey is about enrolling the whole family. You know, you've got to bring them on the journey with you. And parents often start that journey with their child. They take them to school tours, open days, chat with teachers about the prospect. And then once they start at the school, it's about playing a positive and supportive role at the school with the child, perhaps asking them about their day helping them with their homework, not doing their homework <laughs> yes. for them. You know, very key difference there. <laughs> there is a key difference there, and it's not about doing it all. And this signals to the child that you are invested in their learning and that you're part of that shared journey. So Greg, what about the school's responsibility there? Where do they fit in here? That's a great question. At Inquiry Track, we also know it's fundamental that schools set up a welcoming environment that is respectful and welcoming to those parents that's coming into the, your child. They need to be communicating regularly with their with their families and not just adopting a one size fits all mm. approach. We know that they've got to, you know, it, it's not it's not good enough just to say, hey, we do parent teacher interviews and we send out a school mm. newsletter. Now you've got to set up a proper framework for that environment. Yeah, you can't just tick the boxes. You can't just tick the mm. boxes. We believe that the school journey is a partnership with the families, that they have to be they have to be this really well defined opportunities for enga for engagement. Structure it up, have mm. a plan. And I think primary and elementary schools across the world do this way better than secondary and high schools. Mm, I, I sort of feel like at high schools and secondary schools, there's this metaphor, you shall yeah. not come in. Parents behind the gates, behind don't the enter, gate. you, you drop me off two blocks down, mum, don't come anywhere near the school. <laughs> yeah, and our philosophy, our mantra at Inquiry Tracker is, we enrol the family, mm. not just the child. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of parents, what about the notorious helicopter parents? They always, there's always something to say about them. What more? I knew you were going to ask <laughs> me that question. And like anything, uh, over involvement can become counterproductive. Mm. If a parent is too actively involved in doing their child's homework, for example, it means that the learning is not being done by the child. They're not learning to self-manage, to make their own decisions uh, and manage their own learning. And there's the issue, the other one that I like to talk about is the parents hovering either literally or metaphorically uh, at the school gate, you mm. know, or making inappropriate inquiries, emails, phone mm. calls to staff out of Overloading, hours. Overloading, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Being too heavily engaged in their child's learning, taking it over. Uh, we've got to remember that the school is a workplace mm. for the staff and students who are the primary partners in that relationship. Parents are the secondary partners in the relationship, but above all, it has to be respectful and engaging in positive dialogue. Be involved and care and show the ch children you care. Probably a great time to bring in our expert guest. Absolutely, yeah. It must be really hard to balance going from zero to 100. So finding that balance is an important inquiry that we have today. So joining us today is Siobhan Allen, who is the acting chair of Catholic Schools Parents Australia, who knows more about this topic than anyone else. So it's great to have your company today, Siobhan. Now, let's speak about your organisation that's dedicated to ensuring the voice of parents remains heard. So Siobhan, tell us a little bit about CSPA and what you do there. Thanks, Brittany. Um, I'm not quite sure whether I'm an expert, but I'll, I'll give it my best <laughs> shot. Um, so Catholic School Parents Australia is the peak body representing those parents who choose a Catholic education for their children here in Australia. Um, however, this subject about um, parent engagement, it's, it's a cross-sectoral um, subject. It, it involves all children in all schools and all families. Um, but technically, we represent those, um, those parents across all the states and territories in Australia. 
So Siobhan, we did hear from Greg telling us about helicopter parents, but of course that's only a small amount of parents who are like that. So we're really interested to know to what degree should parents be involved in education? Um, so parents should be involved to whatever extent they can be in education. I, I, I get a little bit concerned when I hear terms like helicopter parents. I think we need to be really careful not to stereotype parents. Um, helicopter parents um, are few and far between really. And, and generally they get like that because they have an unmet need as well. They, they maybe are not able to um, communicate with the school for whatever reason. So we need to be very careful about using terminology like that. I think every parent has got knowledge and information about their child that the school doesn't have. And it's really valuable when they can bring that to the school, put it together with the school's knowledge and then create really good and positive outcomes for their children. That's really interesting, Siobhan, but what challenges do you think that parents face as they become involved in their children's education? I think the key challenge, Greg, is, is uh, knowing what to do. Um, you know, there are lots of different um, ways in which parents can get involved in school. And I really like your analogy about um, when a school enrolls a child, they actually enroll the family as well. Mm. So when parents start school with their children, for many of them, it's an unknown uh, road as well so yeah, kids go into it feeling a little bit anxious but so do their parents because you know quite often they don't know what to expect and this is probably even more so when they come to secondary school because it changes completely all over again so I think schools um, being welcoming providing opportunities for parents to, um, to, to come into the school to talk with teachers and to find out what's going on is a really great start. Mm. Yeah, I agree with you as well, Greg. We're not just talking about a student that grows. The families are growing together. So, Siobhan, what signs should a parent or even a school look out for that, I guess, comes a time when the involvement is just becoming counterproductive? Yeah. OK, I think um, it, it becomes counterproductive when it's getting a bit disruptive, I suppose. So, you know, parents may be trying to contact the school or the teacher at an inappropriate time. So it's really important that there are good communication policies and practices in place in schools. And I think the schools that do this really well are those schools which involve parents in the development of those policies. I think when the, the key stakeholders are um, involved in developing this type of policy, it gives them a vested interest in their success. So um, it's important that, that from the school's perspective, that parents understand there's a, a right and a wrong time to be there. And I think as well, um, acknowledging what Greg uh, mentioned earlier on, when you're helping your children in the home, it's really important to understand that we, we should not be doing homework for children, mm -hmm. but in fact, helping them to solve the problems, to you know develop their critical thinking skills in how they go about um, doing their, their tasks at home. Siobhan, you work for an, uh, an association. There's associations across all countries, all states. Do governments have a role in supporting parent associations such as yours? Absolutely. Uh, I think it's really important. We have 50 years now of evidence um, uh, and research demonstrating that when parents engage in their children's education in a positive way, that there are really significant outcomes and they are positive outcomes. You know, they have higher academic achievement, more enjoyment of school, more attendance at school, more kids go on to third level education. So it's imperative when we've got this knowledge that we're doing something about it. So we would like to see government um, work to um, embed parent engagement into education policy and practice. Um, they also have um, a role to play, I guess, in helping to finance research in, in various countries. Obviously, we're doing quite a bit of research with our government here in Australia with, with their financial backing, which is fantastic. Um, and we would really encourage that to be something that, that happens everywhere. And Siobhan, can you tell us a little bit more about the wellbeing study? What were the main findings? And I guess, are there any other further studies that could be planned in the future? Sure, well, last year we undertook um, a very significant uh, survey um, across Australia. Um, around well-being and the government were very keen to hear the, the parent perspective about their children's well-being, particularly post-COVID. Um, so we ran a survey, um, we had about almost six and a half thousand responses and then the survey was followed up with um, some reference groups with individual groups of, of um, 
parents identifying some of the issues that had come out of the survey. So the key thing to come out of the survey, which I must say was not a surprise to us as parents, is that well-being is of as much concern to parents today than academic outcome. Mm. So we know that in order for children to learn that the conditions need to be right for them and well-being is a, is a major issue for, um, for families today. That was the, the, probably the key thing that came out of that survey. Absolutely, and that's a study that definitely needs more funding and, of course, learning. Thank you so much for joining us today, Siobhan Allen. It's been a pleasure to have you chat with us. Thank you. And Greg, of course, as always, thank you so much for bringing your insights to us. But before we leave, we have to know, what are your Beyond Education tips? I love that point that uh, you can't have children learn in an environment if they're not happy or safe. Mm -hmm. Well-being, we should tackle that one in another show. Absolutely. Brittany. Well, firstly, ensure schools have a well-balanced parent engagement program. Use formal events like information evenings to get parents to subscribe to your social media channels. And lastly, set clear boundaries for engagement and publish these so parents, staff and students understand them. So great to be here. Thanks for having us on the program today, Brittany. Oh, thank you so much, Greg. And of course, well-being, we'll have to tackle that one soon. So always stay with us here. The interesting show, as always, presented by Inquiry Tracker. If you'd like to learn more about how your school can use this amazing marketing and admissions software, head over to inquirytracker.net. I'm Brittany Cole. See you again soon.